Hello, everyone. This is Lee Wilson. We want to welcome you to the Takeaway Podcast. I'm here with Pastor John Carter. Pastor John, how are you? I'm doing well. It's good to be back in the studio and uh, talking the word. Yeah, I love it. It is one of my favorite things to do. And uh, my question is, why didn't we do this sooner? I know. Uh, I know. It has so much value just sitting and talking about the word. Reminds me of, you know, back in the day when... Uh, where you were before me, but in the same season, we were kind of in the same um, time frame of growing up in the Word, and we used to sit and just have conversations. Oh yeah, it was all about the Word, just about Scripture. I remember going to uh, going to church, and people would be arriving early and lining up to get the seat, and oh, yeah. we would take copious notes, yeah, because we believed God was speaking through the Word, and then we'd go out and have fellowship and eat and yeah. talk about what God is showing us and how. There's nothing like that when you start building your your Christian faith around the Bible yes. and the revelation of God's word and what God's saying to you and sharing it with one another. Yeah. That's 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 where we real transformation happens. Yeah, I actually that's who I am. That's what I actually every time I'm in a crisis, every time I'm believing God for something, every time I um are in a in a in a time of prayer or a time of fasting, um what comes back to me every single time. What I go to is the foundation of the word and it's not the four points here or the the you know all of the things and I'm one that actually I teach in points I teach with illustrations I teach yes uh in stories and all those things are great but they're supporters of what really is really the truth the word of God right and um and so when I'm sitting and I'm praying personally I love just opening up the word and doing and reading it and I get so much out of it. And that's what I love about the Takeaway Podcast. It has a lot of that. And I want to encourage everyone, um, you know, we take our time in this. We're taking a walk. You know, that's right. We're taking not, a walk through the Word. Yeah. And we're, we're like, you know, and I know you like to go out in the wilderness and walk through things. Matter of fact, one of my first experiences with you is you took me to the old former um, – uh, survivor camp. Our campground. Yeah. Yes. We used <laughs> and to have... you, you took me out in the woods and that was one of the first times I'd ever really been with you one-on-one. And I'm like, oh, is this a setup? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I grew up in the city uh-huh. and, and, and really the city. It was street and cement everywhere, was no woods. And so here you are, um, my pastor, my new pastor at that time. So you, you got know, scared in the woods. I wasn't scared in the woods. I was yeah, actually, you were. No, I was, I was watching. You were I'm, watching for snakes. You are thinking <laughs> everything's going to jump on you. Well, you know what's so interesting? We were so far back in the woods, I couldn't hear anything, but I could hear everything. That's you know, how, there's different kinds of rednecks. Really? <laughs> yeah. There's rednecks that grow up out in the country, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. I kind of grew out sort of more country than suburb. Yeah. And you get scared about going into the city. Oh, right? really? Okay. The oh. Urban jungle, yeah. right? You know, <laughs> lots happening. And, yeah. And then there's folks who grow up in the in the city. Yeah. And uh, they have just the same anxieties and, and just about going out into the swimming in the ocean or going out into the woods. Yeah. And it's funny how we, uh, well, the unknown. The right? unknown. Well, I'll tell you, I brought all that up to say, as we took a walk in, in the early part of our relationship in this quiet place. Um, I got to know you. I got to really get an understanding of a lot of things about your heart, about the church, about the young people at that time. And I think that's what we're doing with this podcast. We are doing the same thing. We're taking a walk. We're not caught up with all the, you know, the cool things that can make this podcast and the natural, culturally, so much more cooler than what people would call. But we're really about making sure um, – we hear what God is saying in the scripture. And right. currently in our church, the Lord has spoken to you about us diving deep and taking a walk scripture by scripture in yes. the book of Philippians. And it has been um, really awesome um, to be there. How's it been for you? What, what do you get out of this as a pastor? Well, um, I love the word. It's my, my passion. Uh, it's my life mission. And there's different kinds of Teaching, preaching. Uh, most preaching we hear today is topical. Uh-huh. There'll be a topic, and then you go through different stories in Scripture and different Scriptures to support it. There's textual preaching, which is where you take an actual verse and you take one text and you just, the thought of that text, yeah, and you reiterate it. But then there's expository, which is where you actually take 
a book of the Bible or a section of Scripture, and you look at the original setting and try to understand what was God saying through the original writer to the original audience, and then what does that mean to me today? And that's the hardest kind of teaching. It requires the most work, but it's the most rewarding because you're allowing the Word to come out of history into your into your life right now. You're, awesome, you're awesome. in the Scripture, and the deepest riches are often there. Yeah. Now, on Sunday, we went to Philippians chapter 1 and really focused heavily in um, verses 12 through 14. Yep. And um, and I, I want to read that, and then I want to just have you kind of— 12 through 18, actually. 12, 12 through 18. Yeah, we, we covered a lot of verses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why don't, why don't you—let's let's just do this. Why don't you um, start us by— Let's read that scripture uh, sure. verses again, and then we'll open it up and just start to have that walk and word by word. Let's do it. Can we pray first? Yeah, let's pray. All right. Father, I just thank you so much for this time today to delve deeper into your word. I thank you, Father, for those that are joining us on this podcast. I pray that you would anoint our ears to hear. And Father, teach us. Teach us as we speak today. Teach us as we listen. Help us, Father, to, to understand the power of your word and to apply it in our own lives in a way that makes a difference in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So in Philippians uh, ch chapter 1 and verse 12, Paul begins the letter by greeting the Philippians, establishing his relationship with them, and speaking confidently about their future, and then speaking a prayer over them. Yes. And we've been covering all of that. Then in verse 12, he shifts. The focus is not about the Philippians and their walk with God and the, the fruit of their lives, now Paul is going to talk about himself. And he does this in Philippians several times. He shifts to what we call a testimonial section, where he starts sharing with them, like in a letter. You know, when you write a letter to anybody, you talk about what you've heard God's doing in their lives, you greet them, you, you tell them how good it is to hear from them, and then you maybe share something personal, and that's what Paul's doing. Basically a story. He's t talking about his, his story. That's right. Yeah. So, okay. And we find out as we go through this that the reason for that is because Paul was this uh, – he was responsible for spreading the Christian faith right. throughout the Gentile world. Right. Uh, no other apostle had done anything like Paul up to that point. He was renowned. And for the last at least two years, possibly three years, Paul had been in prison. He – after his third missionary journey, he went back to Jerusalem. He was arrested. He was held for two years in Jerusalem waiting to be tried. Finally, he gets tried, and he does. He pulls an ace. Uh, he was a Roman citizen, which was not an easy thing to get Roman citizenship. And he said, I appeal to Caesar. And in those days, if you were tried in a court and you didn't like the verdict, you could, if you were a Roman citizen, you could say, I want my case heard by, it would be like saying the president of the United States, That's, Caesar. Yeah. I want to go all the way to the top. And it was a Roman law at that time that uh, that you could get a hearing. So they said, oh, well, okay. And so they put him <laughs> in a ship, and they sent him to Rome. And so Paul is under arrest on the ship. Lots of drama. You can read all about it in the end of the book of Acts, chapters like 24 through 28. I love it. Yeah. Paul finally winds up in Rome, and he's in house arrest. And the Bible says that he was chained to a guard in the royal guard, the praetorium. There's about a 1,000... They were like the secret service on steroids. Mm. They protected uh, the emperor. They also were sort of like uh, police officers, high-level police officers in the city of Rome. So they made sure everything was happening the way they should have been. They were very, very powerful and very feared. And Paul was actually chained. His hand was chained to the hand of a Roman guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they kept rotating. And the Bible says in Acts 28 that Paul was allowed to stay in his own rented house. And for two years in Rome, people came to him, Jews and Greeks, asking him questions about God's word. And he used the Bible. The Bible says he taught from the Old Testament. And day and night, he proved that Jesus was the Christ. And the whole time he's, he's ministering in this house arrest, he's chained to this Roman guard, whoever the guard was at the time. And so... They knew that Paul was in prison. They yeah. knew that Paul was not able to preach. It had been well over two years, two years in Caesarea. Now uh, he was two years under arrest in Rome. He might have been up to three years that he'd been in prison. And so Paul is writing to say, hey, listen, I want you to understand where I'm at because yeah. you've heard about it. But let me tell you, 
And we're going to find out that while Paul was in prison, you know, they say when the cat's away, the mice will play. Yeah. All kinds of things were happening, and a lot of people were undermining Paul's ministry. And what's amazing about this is Paul's attitude. Yes. Which is not only reflected here, but it's really the whole message of the book of Philippians. And, you know, Pastor, as you're talking about this, even the whole ship ride, the years in prison, all of the... It's almost like God s- slowed things down. Yes. At the t- at the same time, it looks like he's in prison, but the promises and the principles of the word of God and God, the kingdom of God is is actually being set up to be deployed while Paul is actually in prison. That's right. And that, to me, reflects upon uh, a lot of people think that their prison or the chains that are in their life is a punishment. But in a lot of times, it's a setup That's for right. God to do something through you. That's the right. timing of God That's right. is so powerful, even in what feels like prison, what feels like um, yeah. I'm, in, I'm a hostage to my problems, to my pains. But it's a lot often God is speaking to you to speak through you to somebody else that looks like they're free. Well, let's just bring it right. Yeah. Let's just bring it right to today. Oops. I just dropped my phone. That's what you. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> we we just got done with two years. I call them the two years that were stolen, right, uh, from this this ridiculous COVID outbreak, yeah. horrible COVID right. outbreak. Yeah, and uh, and a lot of us had to stay in our houses. Right. Uh, I just was just talking to my friend who pastors a great church in Moscow, and he was in his house, couldn't leave his house uh, for over nine months couldn't even leave his house. Wow. And and we were, not only did we couldn't leave our houses, we had to wear a muzzle, right? We had to wear a mask, <laughs> which made it difficult to talk and understand. And in many ways, Paul is under quarantine, and he's muzzled. He can't go out and preach. All he can do is talk to a few people in his house at a time. Yeah. And it's gone on for years. This was the guy who was used to doing things. He was traveling. He was preaching to large crowds. He was healing the sick, mm. making a difference. Now everything slows down, and all he can do is sit and wait. Yeah. And sometimes in life, it seems like everything has stopped for us. Yeah. We are in prison. We can't travel like we want to. We're not pursuing the dreams that are in our heart. We're yeah. not able to do the things that we know we were called to do. And uh, and it seems like while we're off the scene, other people are taking advantage of our absence. Yeah. It seems like evil is thriving, and that's exactly what was happening to Paul. And uh, Paul had to make a decision about how he was going to choose to view yeah. the season of his life. His attitude. Because it wasn't, you know, we can look at it and say, well, that was Satan, mm-hmm. right? Certainly Satan was involved in persecuting Paul, uh, but... Satan doesn't have the power to stop us. That's right. He can delay us. He can hinder us. Yeah. But God is greater than the enemy. And when Satan does something to try to shut us down or slow us down, often God, in his wisdom and foreknowledge, has a plan to even use that for his glory and honor. He sure does. Let's dig into this. I'm excited. Yep. I'm, I'm dropping my phone, hitting the microphone. Yeah, this yeah. okay. is getting me going. But in verse 12, would you read what you? Okay, what but you I would. I I would that you should understand, brethren. Let me just read this in a different. I'm going to read this in the New King James. It's a yeah. little more updated. Yeah. Um, it says, "But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which have happened to me have actually turned out." for the furtherance of the gospel. And that was actually my message, the things that have happened to you. Things happen to us that are not what we desire that knock us down, but he said have actually turned out for the progress of the gospel. And again, this word uh, furtherance of the gospel is two Greek words that means greater than expected and to hack a path forward through dense under underbrush. So Paul is saying, I, even though I've been in prison, even though I've gone through these trials, God has used it to allow me to hack a path forward for the gospel, and things have turned out better than I expected. Mm. He's letting them know that God is using even this pain, and that's important because there were people that were saying to Paul, well, Paul must have done something wrong. That's why he's in prison. Right. God took him off the scene. Yeah. And sometimes when you go into a moment where you're invisible or you're less you feel like you're in prison, maybe are in prison, other people will blame you and, and assign motives for that, yeah. try to write you off. Yeah. 
But Paul chose to not listen to the voices of the rumors of other people. He chose to see that God was working through this. Yeah. And so he said, it's turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. And then he starts telling us how that's the case. He said, so that it's become evident to the whole palace guard and the Greek, the praetorium, this royal uh, police force, all of them. It says the whole palace guard. That means that everyone by this time had heard, uh, had, and to all the rest, which is interesting, that would indicate all of the rest of the people that were around That's the right. praetorium. That's right, yeah. Um, that my chains are in Christ. That actually, even though I'm chained, it's in the will of God. I'm chained in the will of Christ. Christ this is a this is a good bondage. Pastor, this is a good chaining. Yeah, that's important to really stop and talk about because a lot of times we want to get out of this. I can't right. wait to get out of this. My chains need to be broken. Uh, you know, chain break. The Lord break this chain. Why? Uh, why is it important for people, and how can you tell the difference between a chain that is from the Lord and a chain yeah. that is really from sin or generational curses right. or just cultural chains? What's right. the difference? Well, the first thing is that if the chains in our lives are a result of of sin, mm -hmm. things that we know that God's Word says we should be putting aside, setting aside, and we're still engaged in yeah. That's not the will of God. I mean, God's will isn't that uh, we sin, and, and, and sometimes these things happen to us because we're making bad choices, right? Right. But those are dealt with. You confess your sins. The Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive you, and then you turn from your sins. You put in place some action to begin moving away from that sin. And as soon as you do that, Satan is bound and God is on your side. Right. And sometimes it takes time to walk away from some of the sins in our lives, right? Yeah. But as long as we're moving forward in God and we're truly believing him and trusting him, then the chains in our lives, they don't have the power to, to destroy the will of God. Sometimes chains come in our lives because other people are persecuting us and coming against us. And yeah. temporarily we're set back. Uh, and in those cases, we have to bind the spirit, the enemy behind the scenes, and then sometimes we just have to trust the Lord and keep persevering in the things that we can do to move forward, and then God turns it around. But sometimes, whether Satan is involved or other people are involved, and maybe our, our, our work opportunities have, taken, have been taken away. Yes. The government's removed some of our freedoms. Yes. Uh, the pandemic has taken away our our ability to travel freely and enjoy good health. Things have been stolen from us, right. from people, from circumstances, whatever. And we didn't invite it, and there's nothing that we can do to change it. In those moments, we have to believe that God, who knows everything and loves us, has a plan in the midst of it. Yes. And we've got to believe that those chains that we're in can be chains for Christ if we think the right way about them. Yes, it's about the heart and the attitude you That's have. Right. Regardless, even if you're in prison for something you did in, in the natural or you're in chains of a right. sin, you got to ch you change that by your thinking, the that's mind, because right. that's what the enemy attacks you at is in your mind. And he does it often through people. He does it through circumstances, through emotions. That's right. And so, sometimes we're chained to things because we haven't learned the lessons we need to learn yet. Yes. We, we're still chained to them because God wants us to, to learn to sit still for a while in mm -hmm. discomfort Yeah. and uh, learn to walk in love. Sometimes we're stuck in, in jobs or relationships with individuals that are really irritating and annoying us. And, and, and the reality is that God wants us to pass some tests. Yes. Sometimes the reason you can't leave your job in the will of God is because, not, it's not because God doesn't have something better for you. It's because you're not ready for that next job because you haven't learned to submit to the authority you have right now. You're not showing up on time at work. You're not really doing your work with a good attitude. Yeah. You're quietly quitting. Yeah. Those are not Christian values. That's so true. And when we start in, engaging in those things, we're failing the tests that we need to pass in order for God to release the next part of his plan for our lives. Well, can I give you a personal testimony, a small one? Yeah. In my um, early on in ministry, I was serving at a church. Um, I was part of the original 23 members of this church, mm. my family, my brothers, my sister, my mom and dad. 
And it was a very small church. It was 23 people when we first started in that church. Now that church is up in the thousands, 10 to 15 thousands. Wow. And uh, early on, I was a part of the TV ministry. So they started this media and TV ministry, and I was the faithful one. I ran cameras. I produced. I did all of the things that my pastor asked me to do. Even one time we were in a, um, and there was a, we were doing, we had bought TV time to be on, we called the Midnight Special. And so on Friday night, we had bought television time to be live on uh, on a local TV station there in Houston. And we had a hurricane that came through town that week and we had already paid for it. We had to get the, the tape and edit it. I did all the editing. I had to get the tape to the TV station. I get down to the TV station and it had flooded. And wow. my pastor told me, you've got to get that tape there. I don't care what it takes. And I remember parking in the Houston Astrodome parking lot. I rolled up my my sleeves, took my shoes off, and I got that tape, and no joke, and I walked water up to my, up past my, my you know, waist. waist. And I had the tape over my head so it could stay dry. Wow. And I knocked on the door <laughs> of the TV station. They couldn't believe that someone was knocking on the door. And I said, hi. I was, and I was 19, 18 years old. I gave that tape to them. I said, we're going to be on tonight. Uh, here's the tape. And they couldn't believe it. No one saw me. No one knew that I did this. I never heard that story. Yeah, it's the first time I actually shared it publicly. But let me tell you something. At that church I worked for, and I I kept my, I tried to keep my heart right. And uh, one of the policies was you had to be a tither to be on staff. And I got my tither. First, tither. Now explain that. Tither. <laughs> a tither. So <laughs> the Bible teaches that uh, that part of our relationship with God yeah. is he wants to be our financial partner. Yeah. And one of the principles of financial partnership with God is tithing, which tithing. is taking 10% yeah. of your income, of what comes into your life, yes. off the top, and then returning it to the work of the Lord yeah. uh, through the local church. And, and, and we're staff members, and it was taught to us. It was a part of the policies of the of the being on staff that you must be a giver. We... We're taking the tithes from the members, and that's how we're making, they're paying us. So we can't be God robbers. Right. We we're receiving their tithes, right. so we got to do it ourselves. Got my, staff. got my first apartment, got my first car, got my first time of responsibilities, and I stopped giving for about two or three months. And I remember getting called into my pastor's office and him crying, and he's saying, I'm going to have to. Um, uh, let you go because uh, and it was like back then it was no not a lot of grace but I received from it and then I had to sit for six months so you lost your job lost my job sitting on the front row for six months couldn't serve I was the one that turned the lights on every wow. I would turn on the air condition for the church I did everything I had to come to church for six months and sit and I remember telling some people in my life my family and they were all angry and I said we got to keep our hearts right and it was in that time, six months, I sat where I used to be behind the camera, behind doing the production. I'm sitting on the front row. And God taught me so much in that season. I was in chains. It was hard. Wow. But it was in that season that God spoke to me and said, I've called you to this generation. And I, and when I came back, my pastor said to me, There's, I've never seen this type of faithfulness. I want to give you your job back. And I said, Pastor, the Lord has spoken to me. Thank you. I appreciate that. He says, you kept your heart right the whole time. You never murmured. You never gossiped. But I want to hire you. And I said, sir, I believe God's calling me to go to Tulsa. And I left Houston at that time. I wasn't married. Nothing was $62 in my name and went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the rest is history. And I believe it was in that season where I kept my heart right. And I understood what the word of God is saying. And I was in chain. I was in yeah. It was it was it was an emotional prison. Did you start tithing again? Oh yeah, and I never stopped <laughs> since. <laughs> I Amen. never stopped since. It was a, it was a, a a side road here, but I I just want people to know that right. the season you're in, it may feel like it's 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 prison. It may feel like change, but God does something in that. God spoke to me in that season. I believe I'm here today, mm. um, sharing on this other side of this mic today because of my faithfulness in that season of chains in my life. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. And boy, that's an example of maintaining a great attitude. Right. In the midst of, you know, getting consequences for an unwise an unwise know, decision. It you was just didn't have faith to give at that season and no. you know, you, yeah. but it taught me. <laughs> but it the things that have happened to you yeah. turned out 
for the furtherance of the gospel. Exactly. That's exactly what happened with Paul. And that's why I brought it up. And I think it was so yeah. powerful because that's what I love about the word. You can start to see how it applies to your life. We'll talk about application. Yeah. That's real application for me. It is. And for others that are out there listening to this right now. Mm. Let's, let's continue reading. Okay. So Paul goes on to say, um, and this is where it gets really interesting. He said, it's become evident that my chains are in Christ, mm. that this is part of God's will for my life. Verse 14, and most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. He's Amen. saying, look at this. Now, I'm not on the scene, but my brothers and sisters they're filling in the gaps. They're preaching the word without fear. They're yeah. seeing me go through persecution without fear. Now they're more bold. This is good. Paul wasn't able to be out there doing what he was called or wanted to do, but sometimes God has to take us into the backstage for a little bit and other people step up, and that's exactly what was happening. Now the problem was some of the people that were going around to the churches Paul had started, including the church at Rome that Paul hadn't started, but he was well known to the Roman church. They were going around and they were, uh, they were uh, assigning motives to Paul. Yeah, we read about some of the things that these people did in 2 Corinthians 9 and 10 and 11. They were saying that he was just in it for the money, mm. that something Paul had done something sinful and that's why he was in prison, or that God was done with Paul. He's the old way, now there's new ways. And whatever it was that they were saying, it had to be hurtful for Paul. Right. And we know that Paul was able to stand up and defend himself, but this is what's amazing. In this season where he couldn't go out, he couldn't defend himself, he couldn't go to the churches that he started and explain what was going on to him, he just decided, I can't control these things, so I'm just going to trust the Lord. And he said, these people that are more bold to speak, some are preaching Christ from envy and strife and some from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, mm. supposing to add affliction to my chains. And that's where we see people that are doing things and their motives are wrong. They're envious. Yeah. They didn't want Paul to, to continue to be influential. Uh, they, were, they were contentious. They loved a good debate. They wanted to constantly tear down whatever God had been saying through Paul. And they had selfish ambition. And this word selfish ambition literally means to push yourself to the front of the line. It was used in reference to people that were politicking. You know how politicians right. all try to jostle with each other yeah. to become the most the most uh, Make themselves look prominent. good. Yes, uh-huh. Make themselves look good. And, That's yeah, right. right. Selfish ambition is the way it's translated, but it actually means to try to do something good for the purpose of being seen yeah. for your own promotion. And you know, there's a lot of people that do the right thing but their motives are not altruistic. They're not just for God's glory or for Christ. They're really to be seen. Yeah. And we have to be very careful in Christ that we don't just do the right things, but we do them for the right reason. For the right reason, yeah. So and so Paul said some of these people have a totally wrong motives, but he goes on to say, and this is what's so powerful, what am I going to do about this? What, in verse 18, what, what, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. In other words, you know what? Whatever their motives are, Jesus and the message of Jesus is getting out to more and more people, even though I'm in prison. That's right, yeah. And then he makes this statement, and this is the key to Paul's attitude throughout Philippians. And in this fact, I rejoice Amen. and will rejoice. I'm, giving, I'm gonna put my joy on the fact that Christ is being glorified, and I'm gonna continue to, to rejoice over that. I'm not going to let these, these negative influences or yes. these negative reports affect my attitude. Right. We live in a world today um, that is canceling people, mm. and we call it now the cancel culture. The cancel right. culture has become a culture yeah. itself. And it's so important to know that regardless of what people are saying about you, regardless of what pe how people are labeling you, that and maybe have canceled you, that God has not canceled you. You know, and it's so interesting. Uh, this whole idea of canceling people uh -huh. is this idea that if there's something in your thinking or your past that is uh, culturally considered inappropriate, yeah. that no matter how many things you've done since then right. that may be positive or good, 
uh, the one act or the, that one view or that one, sometimes it's just a statement. Using a, a, a word inappropriately means you're worthless. And it's a shame-based thing where we're going to now spread what you did and we're just going to shut you down. And I just, when it comes to our contemporary cancel culture, it's so, uh, it's so ridiculous and hypocritical because no one held to that standard. If all of their private thoughts and words and actions were exposed to the whole world, mm. everyone would be canceled. canceled. That's right. And sometimes I think the people who are the biggest cancelers of others are probably the people that probably violate some of these things the most themselves. Yeah. And uh, and it's not Christ-like. It's not right. Obviously, if we were to, and just even when it comes to the political realm, if I can just jump into that for a minute. Yeah. You know, you hear about people wanting to cancel uh, America's founding fathers or different individuals who who, as we study their lives, we do come to see that there was uh, some not so great stuff. So true. You know, there's no question that, uh, you know, when we talk about Christopher Columbus, he discovered America. He also did a lot of uh, terrible things that by standards today would be considered crimes and were crimes even then by God's word standards, right? right? Not good. Right. Uh, and, and we know that some of the founding fathers had mistresses and they, they owned slaves and yeah. they very often mistreated them. Yeah. These things are they're true. We need to acknowledge it. We need to say that was wrong. Right. Um, at the same time, some of these very same people wrote some amazing things. They did some amazing things. They discovered some amazing things yeah. in spite of the fact that they they had these great failures in their lives. So how do we view them? Yeah. Well, I think traditionally we make we we've made these individuals as heroes, and we've not looked at their let's just say their Humans. seedy underbelly. Yeah. Right. right. And so now we're going to make them all criminals. Right. And neither one of these things are right. They're human beings who did amazing things, who had amazing flaws, and did some really bad things too. Let's look at the whole package and acknowledge that people are a confusing mix of good and bad. That's all so of true. us are, yeah. right? Even yeah. as Christians, Yeah. right? So I think that uh, what I love about Paul is that he is recognizing that there are people out there that are trying to shut him down. Right. Trying They're to trying to him. cancel yeah. him. Yeah. They have all these accusations, and we read about them in other uh, letters that Paul has written. And Paul not only is not attacking them, he's like saying, you can't cancel me. That's right. That's right. You can't shut me down because I'm in Christ. And, and you know, Paul even talks about, I love this, like in Galatians, and even in Philippians, he talks about his past life when he persecuted the church, all the bad stuff he did. If we took a look at what Paul did, Paul was a murderer. Yeah, of Christians, of the very people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was a murderer. He did a lot of bad things. <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. Paul Paul had some really strong, uh, we would by today's standards call them racial attitudes. Yeah. They yeah. had to be dealt with by Christ. Said some things. I'm sure he used some words that we would not say were good words, right? right. But the point is, Jesus did a work in his life. Pastor, and it's so amazing while he was on his way yeah. to do some of that, what we would uh, being a murderer. That's right. Is when God got a hold of him at the moment he was going to do the thing in the was, middle of his sin. In the middle of his sin. At his darkest moment. Yes. And he wasn't looking to repent. Right. Right. No. It's not <laughs> like Paul was feeling bad. You know. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be arresting and yeah, killing all these yeah. Christians. No. You know, maybe. No. Maybe there's something about this. <laughs> yeah, he was on his way to kill Christians. To, to arrest some more in, in yeah. <laughs> Damascus, right? Yeah. And the Lord knocks him off his horse and just says, hey, I got another purpose for you. Uh, so awesome. Now, there are people right now listening to this, no matter if it's right now or later on right. when we're recording this. What would you say to people who feel like they've been canceled, who feel like they've mm -hmm. been put in prison, and how do I... What do I do from now? Like Paul. Paul didn't give up while in prison. What would That's you right. say to them? Well, what I would just say, let's use that that motif, canceled, right? Right. So whether you're talking about people have written you off or canceled you through social media, which is kind of a unique phenomenon of our yeah. current moment, yeah. or you feel canceled because the things that you wanted to do for your life seem so far away. COVID has robbed you of time. You've experienced some losses, and you feel that... You know, the future you had has been canceled. Mm. Mm. You know, here's Paul in prison. All he knows is that he's got a court date in about a year or so to see Caesar. He's not getting out anytime soon. And then he doesn't know if he's going to live or die when he, got, when he finally stands before the emperor. Because basically in those days, if you're guilty, they kill you. They don't right. put you in prison for the rest of your life. They right. just <laughs> take your life, yeah. right? 
And so uh, Paul doesn't know what's going to happen. And we don't always know what's going to happen next. But I think if you feel like you've been canceled, if you've lost your opportunity, this is where you have to intentionally go back and see the hand of God. Yes, You've got to look at what has God done. Even if you haven't done everything right, what has God done? Mm. And look for the opportunities right now. And here's what Paul is doing. He's not, uh, he's not able to preach and teach, but people are coming to him. And with a few people that were able to come into his house at a time, he was teaching the Bible to them all day long. Yes. And the prison guards, he's witnessing to them. Yeah. Every day, a witness. Every day, studying the Word. And he's writing letters to these churches. The greatest, my favorite letters in the New Testament are the letters that Paul wrote in prison. Ephesians. Yeah. Colossians, yes. Philippians, First and Second Timothy, yeah. possibly Hebrews, although that's a debate, but, but some of the most powerful, deep teaching that we have in the Word of God about who we are in Christ came from the pen of Paul while he was in prison and canceled, so to speak. Yeah. Pastor, you know, I've said this to you many times since you came back from sabbatical um, um, several weeks ago, um, and I've been one of the ones who privileged to be kind of close to you and and you've always been who you are but your time of sabbatical was important for you as well because you were in a lot of ways one would say it was in chains but you put yourself in a position obeying god obeying the authorities in your life That's right. to take time off and when you came back even today as i'm listening to you you know there's there's um i don't know um your presence, there's a, there's a humility about you, and there's a place that you're in emotionally that's so healthy, and, and so there's a vulnerability uh, about you as well. And I think it's important for people to know that, that you're not preaching at them. No. You're preaching out of a place, you, your own self, that that's you right. are, and I believe that as well, and I'm the same. That's why we can have this conversation and be, I think it feels so organic, it feels so good to people when they're listening to it because it's coming from a place of realness. And I, I love that about you, and especially as you've come back. You've been so vulnerable when you preach on Sundays, when you talk to us in our staff meetings, when I have one-on-ones with you, even on this podcast. You've talked about that place yourself, that you were in a place where you weren't preaching. You couldn't preach. God right. said not to. Your board said not to. Right. You know, And now here you are preaching again, but yet you still carry that same attitude. And I think it's about the attitude that I see in you and others who have um, success and fruit in their life in this. What, what would you say kind of, you know, where are you in all of this when you look at yourself personally as a man, mm -hmm. as a father, as a pastor? I can relate in very, very deep levels to this, this whole experience of Paul, um, having been in the ministry for 30, uh, 32 and a half years. Yeah. Um, actually, more than that, because I was an associate pastor for three years before that, and then Bible school for four years before that. So been doing this my whole life since I was 18. Um, after a while, you forget who you are. Yeah. Apart from what you do. Yeah. And it's impossible to really, it almost becomes impossible. And you have to intentionally lay things down for a season in order to rediscover my walk with God it got to the point where everything I was reading in the Bible, every, there was it was all to give to others. Yeah, and so I was empty, and I needed those five months to uh, to redisc not just to not give to others because that's I love to do that. That's who you are, but I needed to not be able to give to others so that I could start receiving myself. Yeah, and uh, rediscover who I was with just me and Jesus. Yeah. And that was powerful. Also, it's humbling. It causes you to realize it's not all about you and your gifts and your your status and what you can achieve, but it's really about Christ. Yeah. And we're all going to walk on this earth for a few days, really just yeah. a few days, and then we're going to step off into eternity. Yeah. And there's been a long line of people before us, and should the Lord not come right away, there'll be a long line of people after us. We're here for a moment in the season. And what matters is that we learn to walk with God and that we make the difference we're called to make and live the best, most authentic life we can live. Yeah. And I think that when we go through seasons where we're in chains, 
where we feel canceled, where we feel like life is on hold and we can't jumpstart it. We can't just move to another place. We can't just quit. A lot of times that's what we do. You know, we feel chained and so we quit a job and start a new one. We, mm-hmm. we you know, get out of one house and buy another one. We move from one city to another trying to jumpstart our lives. And if, if God's leading those changes, that's that's wonderful. But so often we just initiate those changes because we're bored, we feel bound, and we're trying to make something happen. And we end up maybe in a new job, a new city, a new relationship, but it's the same us, yeah. the same emptiness. And, and what we have to do is learn in the chains we feel right now to be content in Jesus, to have joy. Paul said, I will rejoice yeah, right. in this, in this, right now, in, in this. this circumstance, yeah. in these chains, yeah. in the fact that Christ is being preached yeah. by me to the extent that I can and by others. And this is about him anyway. It's not about me. Yeah, yeah. That's the big thing. Yeah. Paul is actually saying it's not all about me. Yeah. It's, it's about not, Jesus. It's not about titles. It's not about followers. It's not about popularity. It's not about any of the things that culture has made success and purpose about. It's really about, and I love what, what Paul said here, the last verse in there, in that in verse 18, in this. Your this may not be mm. uh if we can use this word, sexy, are mm-hmm. are popular, are success as we know it. Your this mm-hmm. may be dirty, ugly, shameful. No appreciation. No appreciation. Nobody telling you yeah. keep on. You're, 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 you're not the you're not the boss. You are you're less of the boss. You've been in the warehouse. You've been driving that forklift. You've not gotten the promotions. Your this may be ugly. People have judged you. People have canceled you. But here's the key. Rejoice. Yeah. Then he goes back. Yes, because you know why? I, you know, I like that. That's how I look at the word. He says, "Rejoice." You mean you want me to rejoice in all of this craziness? Yeah. You want yeah. me to rejoice that I keep I'm I'm the the least of the other mom? Yes, he said. Yes, and will yes rejoice. Yeah. So just so you think he wasn't talking about you, uh-huh. just so you think God wasn't looking at your situation, and you're like, no, no, he's not just talking to the popular people, the successful people, the people that are in sin. He's talking to you. That's right. Yes, you rejoice. That's it. And and <clears throat> what's really powerful about this is Paul is saying there's a whole lot of stuff I can't change. That's right. And I'm not rejoicing about he's not like excited that people are are, are accusing him of things and yeah. and doing Canceling the right him. things for the yeah. wrong. He's not excited <laughs> about the fact that, you know, yeah. he's been, he's gone through some real abusive situations in prison, but he's saying in this I'm going to rejoice. Yeah. This is the thing I'm going to focus on. Yeah. And we all have to focus. We can focus on the pain. We can focus on the loss. And when we experience pain and loss, we need to acknowledge it and feel what we're going to feel with Christ. But we can't get stuck there. That's right. In these moments of life, this is like this is like a five alarm warning. Yeah. If you feel like you are in prison, five alarm, look for what God is doing. Look for the opportunities that you do have and use them. Rejoice in that. And the rest of it, you can't change it anyway. So why worry about it? Why talk about it? Why whine about it? Yeah. And he's going to go on in Philippians. He's going to talk about their complaining. Yeah. He's going to talk about their attitudes right. over and over again. But he's saying, this is how I'm dealing with my prison. So how should you deal with yours? Yeah. And, you know, right before he said rejoice and he says, in this, he said, Christ is. Christ is preached. Christ is. Christ is. Christ is. And I think that mm. Christ is, is the overcomer of the crisis. Oh, that's good. That you're in. You got a little alliteration going. There we go there. You know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Christ is. Go ahead, Bishop Jakes. I want to hear this. <laughs> Bishop Jakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been called him a few times, you know. So hey, listen. I'll, I'll tell I you. I love it. But I, I honestly believe that Christ is, no matter what the situation is. Yeah. Christ is. And that's what I'm rejoicing in. That Christ, Christ is. is. He's the overcomer. Because of him, I'm, I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah. Because of him, um, you know, I have this hope. Because of him, I'm going to be able to get through this situation. And this sets us up for the next section. Yeah, and which we're not going to get into right now. No, no, but I mean. <laughs> it's, so, it's so rich. Yeah. Um, you know, we call this the takeaway because at the end of the day, this is what we want you to take away. And 
live in your life. Live this in your life. Yeah. Um, Pastor, we can talk uh, forever, actually. I, I so enjoy uh, these conversations with you. We're actually in the studio. We got a couple of people in here, but I feel like it's just you and I. Yeah. And I see them over here looking, too. They're receiving. They're not just here working. But it's so powerful. I, I enjoy this every single time. I hope you do as well. Oh, it's awesome. It's yeah. great. And uh, I hope that folks get something out of this, and it causes uh, those who listen to really press in. And hopefully we'll tune in some more because there's always more to say. There's so much. So much there's more. So much more in the Word. Yeah. This is the Takeaway Podcast. The one thing we want to ask you to do is not just listen to it, but share it. It's important to share this, not just because we're trying to get followers, even though we love for this to be uh, thousands and thousands of people listening to it, but really for the right reason, as we were just talking about, share it because it's good news. Share it because there's something that God has for you, and God is allowing you to stop and take a walk in his word as we're doing here in the Takeaway Podcast. And so I've I've enjoyed this one. Um, I'm in looking forward to the next one. I know you are as well. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you next time here on the Takeaway Podcast. 